minus one minute. T minus fifty seconds. T minus forty seconds. Minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. Ten. Public service announcement. I need all my Titan fans to come on down. Grab you some popcorn, grab you a drink. Titans Coliseum in the building. Yeah, not not boy, I'm in the game. Still ballin' now, never change. I be rapping my hometown for the whole city, really knew my name. Boss talk, I don't do favors. Yeah, we signing deals with the top players. We just started this lifestyle. We be having all kind of haters. I'm a mad man, they better come give me one to botch me in, but I'm too sticky. If they come at me sideways, I'm a stiff on me like Derek Henry. Now listen, we're not the same. EA Sports, boy, I'm in the game. I be rapping my city, dog. Got a tight logo hanging on the chain. Big money, big moves, new stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't want to play. They be trying to talk down on us. I just laugh at them and I walk away. I don't tolerate disrespect. Might shoot the pay, pin it hard away. Big money, big moves, new stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't want to play. We be putting in the hard work, so we coming in without kind of skill. I be living in the end zone. My finger roll like Tony Hill. What's possible? Yes, sir. What's poppin'? Welcome to the Titans Coliseum Podcast. Five Stone, RJ, how y'all feeling? I'm feeling good. Feeling good today, man. You know, yeah, we, I think everybody, everybody here is, you know, doing a good thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Having a good day. Titans uh, Coliseum in the building with A to Z Sports. You know how we doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excited, man. Excited to talk some Titans football. We got a special guest in here, man. Been a fan a long time. So, man, just truly excited about today's episode. Man, I ain't even going to hold y'all, man. This man don't need no introduction, but just like everybody is, damn it, he going to get an introduction, man. <laughs> we got one of the OGs in the building, man. When it comes to digital streaming, I mean, this guy right here, he's the reason we do what we do, man. So y'all give it up for Austin Stanley of A to Z Sport. Yeah. You're making me blush a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm trying to get a little better with the introduction, man. But no, I like that. what's popping, man? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Excited about this. Always fun talking Titans, and we got plenty of stuff to talk about. Uh, less than two weeks from the draft, new era, a lot of money spent, uh, high draft picks. Let's do it. Yes, yes sir. sir. Let's get to it. But hey, before we do, man, everybody out there, make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us. Blah blah blah. This, that, and the third. It's the weekend, y'all. And if you got a beard, you got to make sure your beard on point. So head over to lionsdenbeardcollection.com, man. Use the promo code Coliseum. Get 25% off. And also, hey, after that long Friday night, man, you know you're going to need to get yourself together Saturday morning, man. So get you some coffee, man. Get, get the best coffee. I don't care what nobody say. Forget Folgers and all that other foolishness, man. Get you some Sunny Smiles Coffee over at SunnySmilesCoffee.com. Freshly premium roasted coffee. If you're in the U.S., you're going to get free shipping. Where else can you get that, y'all? Come on, man. <laughs> Head over to Sunny Smiles, man. And Five Stone, talk to him about the red. Man, talk to him about that shirt you got on, man. Yes, sir. Y'all can, <clears throat> as y'all know, we got our new merch out right now. Let Rand Cook merch is out now. Y'all can go grab it. Grab it before uh, draft day. We got hoodies. We got t-shirts. We got multiple different designs. 
uh, go to titanscoliseum.com, read the articles, read the press conferences, or uh, the press releases we have there, the news, and grab your merch there as well. So go to titanscoliseum.com slash merch and get your Let Rain Cook shirt today. RJ, well, yeah. you, you, you're a rapper right now. You're a rapper for like 30 <laughs> seconds, man. Romeo. <laughs> I, if, I mean, I, you know, I haven't got any uh, bad reviews on the song, man. But if you love the <laughs> intro song, man, and you know, say you want to uh, have it on your iTunes, you know, what I'm saying you want to have it on Spotify, any other, but any other big name, you know, what I'm saying music stream platforms, man. Make sure you go check it out, man. Romel's in the game, man. You know, what I'm saying we worked hard on it, man. I'm glad you, I'm glad everybody's liked it so far. So, let's show. So we got all the business out the way, man. Fellas, y'all ready to get to this two tone business? Yes, sir. Well, hey, let's get to it, man. Um, draft right around the corner. And just to start things off, Austin, just going to get your thoughts on what the Titans should do at number seven. It's been a long draft season, but I think I've come to peace to where I feel like the Titans, if they stay at seven, are going to get a really good football player. Now, it's like, do you want Joe Alt for sure? Do you want a Dunze? I love Malik Neighbors. I think he would be uh, my prospect 1A if he's available at 7. But even then, if you don't get uh, a Dunze, Alt, or Neighbors, trade back options uh, are, are pretty uh, deep too. Uh, but I, you know, I think Dallas Turner should be on the board. The Titans need edge rushers. You look at what the Texans, the Jags, and the Colts are trying to do in the division, you have to get after the quarterback. That's never going to change. So I think if the Titans want to stay at 7, they're going to have – a decision to make. It might not be between Alt or Neighbors, but it might be Alt or Adunze or Adunze and Dallas Turner, Brock Bowers trade back. So I think whatever they got coming to them at seven is going to be interesting, uh, depending on how the trades work. You know, it, it feels like it's too good to be true. It, it feels too easy that quarterbacks are just going to go one, two, three, Marvin Harrison Jr. Like that's usually not how things play out, but I think seven's a great spot to be in right now. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a sweet spot, man, especially for this draft right here. I mean, this is a very top hit when it comes to quarterback. You know, probably the first three picks are going to be quarterback. Who knows? The first four might be quarterback, man. Uh, but RJ, I already know your thoughts, man. But- <laughs> Hey man, you know, you know, it's a, I've been big Joe off from the beginning, man, and I feel like, man, just go ahead and solidify the protection, man. Especially when you got Daniel Hunter and you got Josh Allen and you got, you know, the 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 Forrest Buckner and all those guys in this division, man. It's time for us to, to make sure we can block. I don't want to see what I saw this year where we getting six, seven sacks in the game. You know what I'm saying? And Will Levis is on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Because Will Levis got hurt. If you didn't notice, Will Levis got hurt in both Houston games. <laughs> both Houston games, he, he didn't finish the game. So, like, I want him to actually be able to finish the game so we can actually evaluate him and see what he is as a quarterback. So, Joe off for me. Stephen. Wow, Stone, talk to him. Yeah, we got to get some type of protection for him here. And, and you know, I was watching y'all show earlier today and, and Sam's kind of mock draft situation, too. So, that's – I've kind of leaning towards what he was kind of going to is like, it might be a possibility that we go to offensive tackles with that first and second round. And even though it's not the most exciting pick, cause I I've been against that too. Cause like I want wide receiver. I'm tired of going offensive line in the first round, but the way the free agency has worked out, we got wide receivers, we got some skill positions, we got some DBs out there. So we can kind of then take that, that step right there to make sure at least Will Levis ain't on his back to get these new targets and Tony Pollard, Calvin Ridley, D hop into the game and then whatever we, we draft. So it's going to be crazy how this draft night works out. Cause there's so many different scenarios we can go with and not many of them seem to end badly for us. It's just going to be, who's the scheme fit. Who's the guy that they think is really going to work well with them. Who do they think Bill Callahan can coach up and work into develop mm-hmm. into being that guy? Cause I'm not sold that it's Joe Alt is our only fix at left tackle. We got to do something at left tackle, but I'm I'm not sold that it's only Joe Alt. Or if we don't get Joe Alt, then Will Levis is going to be getting killed this year behind this line. I just think we got to get somebody Bill believes that he can actually coach up and develop into being what we need, and that's just keep Will Levis off his back. Yeah, and to uh, your point about Sam's mock from our show on A to Z Sports.com, Sam did a two round mock draft. He traded back at seven. Joe Alt was off the board in the simulation. Uh, so he traded back with the Saints to 14 and got another second-round pick, and he went 
with CJ Latham at 14 for the right tackle. And then uh, at the 45 overall pick, he went with Patrick Paul from Houston to be the left tackle. And then you had Darius Robinson from Mizzou, uh, edge rusher there at 38. I think it's a good haul because I always go back and, and whenever we're talking about the tackle and the offensive line, I feel like every time Rand Carthon's talked about the draft at a press conference, senior bowl, combine, at the facility, whatever it is, he always says it's a deep class. It's a deep class. You can, you know, you don't have to, it's a deep class. It's going to be fine kind of a deal. And so I think trading back because there's not much of a difference. It's more preferential pick between the offensive tackles after Joe Alt. So if Alt's gone, then, you know, what's the difference in Bautanu from Washington or Fuaga from Oregon state and Latham from Alabama? I mean, it's just preferential thoughts on that. And I think Bill Callahan knows what he wants. And that's a, a big thing the Titans have on their side. So let's say we do go wide receiver at like first or second round. Does that put the ending on the Traylon Burks era? And do you think possibly Traylon Burks is a draft night trade? And if so, what do you think the realistic value for a Traylon Burks trade right now would be? I don't know what trade value he has, if any. I, I don't think he has any. He hasn't shown he can stay healthy. When he's been healthy, he hasn't shown he can consistently catch the football. Or score a touchdown. Those are not good things to have. Um, I think that the Titans, if they draft wide receiver in the first or second round, it's more about DeAndre Hopkins being on a contract year than it is Traylon Burks. I think even now, without a rookie wide receiver in the room, they have to say, okay, if Burks gives you anything, gravy, it's a bonus. Um, but if you do want to go wide receiver first or second round, that's more about who is Levis going to be throwing to in 2025 and 26, Calvin Ridley and Malik Neighbors, Adunze, Pearsall, McConkey, whoever else is that second round type of guy. So I think it's more about that. Burks is just a wild card. Like if you get something out of him, great. If you don't, then you know you're going to move on uh, somewhat soon. But trade value, man, I, I just I don't see a team giving up a, a, a quality pick for it. I think you'd rather, if you're the Titans, you'd rather just have him on your roster to just, just to roll the dice another year and to hope it ends up good. No, uh, yeah, because I mean, for what all Traylon Burst has been through, man, uh, he, he started games in his league. So, I mean, if it comes down to it, you at least got a guy in there with some experience that can, do something but uh i'm gonna play this video of uh brian callahan in his media availability and a uh, great question by teron davenport uh callahan talked about the uh the draft process when it comes to dealing with guys with character issues and uh play this video and then we'll get y'all thoughts on it. You go through that process, like with the prospects and even in the draft meeting rooms, like how do you personally approach guys who have so-called off the field issues or, or baggage character concerns? Uh, you find out what it is that is considered a character concern. You know, there's, um, I think a lot of these guys are, are 19, 20 and 21 year old kids. Um, I think about a lot of the things that I did when I was that age. And, and I don't know that um, people would have, not that they were bad things, but yeah, I like to be around my buddies and go out and go to a party and do those. I mean, those are all things that these guys do. And sometimes they get unfairly knocked for um, some of those things. And some of them have real life issues that they're working through that have real difficulties uh, in their home lives growing up. And um, those are things that, that they have to work through themselves that are, are part of the equation. But so if you watch media availability, you know how long that answer was. And the first thing I got to thinking about is, this guy got to be defending somebody. I mean, you're not going to sit up there and answer a question like that unless you're defending somebody. I mean, it's line season two, so, I mean, you got to keep that in mind. But that wasn't coach speaks. That was him, in my opinion, defending somebody. Austin, your thoughts? I mean, I think um, probably the timeline of what's happened of Tavondre Sweat gets a DWI uh, arrest over the weekend the Titans bring in sweat on a 30 visit and the press conference, like the next day. I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't asked Teron like if that was his 
narrative or, or thought behind asking the question, but I know fans have been curious about that. We on A to Z talked about sweat earlier in the week too. And people in the chat saying, well, you just get a DWI. Like why, why would you bring in that's stupid, right? Character issues. I, I don't think a DWI means you're a bad person. I think it made you, you made a stupid ass decision. That's a hundred percent avoidable at all times, but doesn't mean you're a bad person or have character issues. It could, like you could be a bad person and get a DWI because good and bad people do those things. So I think it's, I think it's, I, I don't know if that's exactly what uh, Callahan was referring to, but I think overall it's you know, everybody's young. Everybody's feels invincible, especially athletes at this age because they're big men on campus. They're big men on campus in high school and in college. And now they're about to come into a bunch of money. NIL has changed that now too. They're getting a bunch of money early, which I think a, kind of a tangent on that. Getting NIL dollars should make college athletes less dumb in what they do at nighttime, <laughs> right? Because you've got something on the line, like in real time with tangible like dollars. And so I think that should be able to keep guys kind of straight and narrow uh, and not doing any of that stupid stuff that we've seen over the decades. But I think, you know, Callahan is right. Like you do dumb things when you're a kid you, and you're still a kid when you're 19, 20, 21. And so I think that's kind of how I took all of that. But you got to sort through it all. You got to figure out who's a knucklehead and who's a repeat offender of dumb things because we know the former coach, Mike Vrabel, don't do dumb shit to hurt the football team. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's, it's everywhere, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that rule still applies before and after Mike Vrabel. So let me ask you this, Austin. Uh, you talked about sweat, which we all know about the DWI thing, but um, there was some things thrown out there about Malik Neighbors as well, having some character concerns. Uh, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, I saw it. It was like uh, Malik Neighbors wouldn't do well in a big city, which I think is, <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> like this they comes out it. in April. It hasn't uh, in March. February, January, December of the whole time Malik Neighbors was breaking records like 40 minutes from New Orleans. Like you're telling me that he can't, you know, act right. Like that, I, what that here's what I take from that. Uh, who are the two uh, cities drafting right ahead of the Titans at seven? LA and, and New York. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah. That's Lines. why I'm like, it, it, I'm telling you, the Titans are doing this. It's the Titans know. that are doing it. Because yeah. last year, you remember the CJ Stroud? It's not Atlanta, it's not Chicago, and it's not the Jets. <laughs> so <laughs> is it is just be a, no? Yeah. Who else is it going to be? Yeah, I just look at it because last year, because C.J. Stroud was the dumbest quarterback to ever exist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they tried their best, like, they tried they best to make C.J. Stroud fall in their draft. Like, right. it, it's us. <laughs> it's got to be us. And here's the, the STU score. You guys know that was developed by Vandy guys, and it's in Nashville. Wow, I did so, not know they, that. <laughs> yeah, if you want to – let's just connect dots and build conspiracy theories. The yeah. Titans tried to get C.J. Stroud to drop to three to trade up and get him, and they're trying to get neighbors at seven because uh, <laughs> Nashville's a smaller city. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Cover the ball. <laughs> oh, and, like, too, because, like, cause the, the sweat thing, and I was thinking about this earlier, like – when when I was analyzing what Brian was saying, I was like, he he is kind of defending what, what Sweat was talking about in that way. But we also forget that Jeffrey Simmons came into the draft with an incident. It wasn't a DWI, but he still had an incident, and people was judging about his character. And that's one of the reasons Jeffrey fell to us. And he came here, turned around, had a great career, has been an example of the community, exactly what we want him to be. So if anybody was to bring this guy in and think that he was going to have good mentorship and be able to turn this around, Jeffrey Simmons would be a great mentorship for Sweat to turn this around like, hey, look, this is how you bounce back. This is how you turn something bad into something good and take them under his wing. Because that was one of the things I said when we talked about it on here was this is more about the circle that Sweat has around him. You got to know that you got to have a circle that knows that you're the bigger guy. You're the guy getting the money now. Even if you're not thinking about, hey, we're going out. Hey, guy, we, we, one of us don't need a drink. We need, we need a DD or we need to have a plan for Uber. Somebody in your circle has to be thinking about the forehead or the foreseen future and thinking about your future even at times where you might miscalculate things. So Jeffrey Simmons can help him build that, that, that better circle, can teach him how to bounce back from that. So if we was to go get him, I would have faith in, in not so many question marks about his character issues and, and him having those issues moving forward because he's going to be in that same room every day with Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, and Jeff was a high schooler when that happened, too. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And that was a very unfortunate situation and just kind of scary and stuff all, all 
toll, but that was back in high school when he was like 17, maybe 18 years old at that point. Yeah, man, I just look at it like this, man. This man, Tim Devontae Sweat, came in as a first round pick, and now he they talk about him going in the fourth and fifth round. Like, it's crazy how much <laughs> this guy has killed his draft. Stock. Like, I feel bad for this kid. He done missed out on so many millions of dollars through this draft process. And it's like, man, at this point, man, I need to fire my agent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Wait, it's an IQ test. There. Right. Yeah. It's like it's like remember when uh guys used to fail drug tests at the combine? Mm-hmm. It's just like, come on, like it's not like it, like the NFL drug test players the same like windows every year. All you gotta do is get past those checkpoints and then you're do to do whatever you want to. It's just an IQ test. If you fail a drug test at the combine, that's just not very smart. Um, you know, and and the thing with with sweat too and and then also you've got Rasheed Rice, you know, racing Lambo SUVs down Dallas uh, yeah. highways. Like I think all of these things kind of happen simultaneously. And I, did does Rasheed Rice have character issues coming out of SMU? I didn't hear anything about it. So it still means that a guy who's 22, 23 years old in the offseason back in Dallas with a college teammate did something stupid. And so, yeah. I, but wait, I don't know what Rasheed Rice is or isn't uh, outside of that incident, but that's how fast it happens. One bad thing can ruin a lot, just like with Tavondre Sweat dropping to maybe day three. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, man. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I'm sitting up over here thinking about what Chris Carter said a few years back. Uh, you gotta have a fall, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, ask uh, Shohei Otani about a fall guy, too. Yeah, <laughs> man. That gambling story is crazy, man. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah man. But um, we're going uh, we to keep this thing rocking and rolling, man. Uh, for everybody out there, man, uh, thank y'all for watching tonight or listening because you can also catch us on all digital streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, iHeart, Amazon, wherever you get your content at, you can find the Titans Coliseum, man. But um, we're going to keep this thing rocking and rolling, man. We're going to talk about a little Will Levis tonight, y'all. Will Levis, we we can't have a show without talking about our quarterback. And uh, Will Levis, I mean, uh, he he's come in here uh, so far in the offseason, and uh, it seems like he's – been doing everything that he's supposed to do. I mean, when you hear the coaches talk about him, they talk about, you know, his intensity and, uh, you know, just, you know, everything that he's doing to become the leader of the Titans. And I want to ask you, uh, want to ask you this question, Austin. Uh, do you believe that Will Levis is a, uh, setting the tone to become the leader of the Titans. Yeah, I absolutely. I mean, I think the way that Levis and DeAndre Hopkins quickly bonded in the middle of last season shows you a lot about um, what, how he's carrying himself in the locker room around the facility with his teammates. Obviously throwing four touchdowns in your debut helps win everybody over, but it, it was within that. It was like the first couple of, big receptions or, or completions made and the celebrations going off. His intensity is crazy. And D hop is not intense. He is as relaxed and cool as it gets. And Levis is always just like ready to go. Like Sam and I made the joke about, I don't know how many or what his pre-workout is, but apparently he doesn't take pre-workout, which is insane because <laughs> the guy looks like he's on pre-workout just about all hours of the day. But that's just him naturally, which is kind of wild and shows the passion that he's got. And people feel that. And you can feel, and I've been in locker rooms uh, covering the Titans for a while now, you can feel when somebody's trying to fake that and when it's legit. And other players can too. If I'm in there for you know a Wednesday after practice locker room session for 40 minutes and I can feel that something's not authentic, then guys that are there around him all day, absolutely no. And he's authentic. That's him. It's a little goofy and, and cringy at times and comes across maybe a little robotic, robotic, but the guy is intense and he's a competitor and he, all he does is want to win. And I think, uh, you know, I, I saw he's down there in Augusta at the masters, uh, doing some TV hits. And so, Hey, now you've got Titans have a quarterback who's doing ESPN TV hits at the masters. 
that's you know Derrick Henry's gone, and you guys are probably have to update that cool intro because yeah. all those Derrick Henry touchdowns. I know that's probably been on your radar, but now insert Will Levis, who's getting a lot of uh, attention and national um, discussions on radio shows, TV shows, whatever it is. He's going to be everywhere if he keeps playing like this. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And new intros come in post draft. Yeah, bro. <laughs> We've had to be- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah, the song stays. It's just change out the highlights. You know, then you're yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. I'll say this though, and this is how I feel about you know Will Levis. I can't really judge him right now as a quarterback. You know, what I'm saying because I mean he he was just getting hit so many times, and he had some flashes. You know, what I'm saying he had some good times at the quarterback, the Miami game, the the Steelers game, the Falcons game. But I look at it like there's one thing I can judge right off the back is that he is a leader. He's a guy that I feel like, you know, with Tim Tebow, you know, and you, you ain't got to judge Tim Tebow, the quarterback. You knew when you when you come to play with Tim Tebow, he's going to you he gonna make sure that you're better. He's going to make sure that you play at your, yo, you know what I'm saying, yo, at your best. And I, I, I get that same vibe from Will Levis. He's a, when, I, when I seen those pictures of him, of the workouts and stuff, and it looked like he's out there leading guys. He's like he's a leader of men, like. And I felt like our leader of men before he got there was Mike Vrabel. And I was like, I don't want that to come from the coaches. I want that to come from my quarterback. And I, I and I, I stressed this to, you know, me and Firestone, we used to go back and forth about Ryan Tannehill. And I was telling them that, like, one thing I, don't, I didn't like about Tannehill is that I felt like he isn't animated enough. Like, he needs to yell at people. He needs to cut somebody out. And I, I get that vibe from Will Levis. He needs to be hyped when we score. When we score a touchdown, he needs to be out there screaming, you know what I'm saying, and and, and make us, and, and bringing the energy towards our team mm-hmm. to make us want to keep dominating the team that we're playing against, you know. So and I, I, I get that vibe from Will Levis. I think, I think the Titans took a step from Marcus Mariota that was, yes, sir, I'll do whatever the coach says. The Ryan Tannehill, who was the veteran, knew what to do, knew what he liked, knew what he didn't, and worked with the coaches really well. And Tannehill did a great job with his teammates. I, I think Tannehill was a solid leader uh, when things were going well. Obviously, the, the wheels fell off at the end. But I, I directly saw Ryan Tannehill slice, verbally slice Kyle Phillips for doing something incorrectly in a training camp practice in the red zone period. And then later that practice came right back to him in the same type of situation and connected on a touchdown. Uh, so you see you know, one thing that Tannehill didn't really do a lot as of, you know, later in his Titans career was truly take the blame for things. Um, but you know, was he to blame completely? <laughs> I don't know. Like it was, oh, no. it, he was kind of maybe being a little <laughs> honest, but yeah. normally quarterbacks, quarterback and head coach, it's my fault. We lost. It's their, uh, their credit that we win. Um, and so, you know, Levis is definitely going to be that guy, and uh, I'm excited to kind of see how he continues to mature and, and grow into that role naturally. The guy's been a quarterback his entire life. Like quarter, like I feel like you could walk down the street and look at somebody and be like you played quarterback. Like yeah. they just kind of they walk <laughs> differently and they just kind of you know they interact differently. Like yeah, you played quarterback or something like that. So uh, Levis definitely screams that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, Go I'm excited to see what. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he got too. Cause like we sh- truly ain't seen all of his full potential. Like I've said on here a lot of times, we've seen him throw a deep ball, but you haven't seen him throw a deep ball like you've seen other quarterbacks that where they have to hunk their whole body into it and get that leg behind it. So you ain't seen that from Will Levis. You've seen a flick of a yeah. wrist and that ball goes 60, 70 yards. So I'm like, I really want to see what this arm can do. And when I first saw his big arms, I was like, man, all right now, but can you have touch on it? And a lot of times we saw last year, he has touch. He puts the ball right there with him. And he has that fire and ignite that we truly ain't had since McNair. Mariota seemed to like, okay, guys, we'll get him next time when when shit goes wrong. And that used to aggravate me with Mariota. And in Tannehill, it was like a little bit, but not as much as you want. It's like, okay, you're holding some guys accountability, accountable and maybe in the locker room. But I want to see you get onto them in those situations and play like RJ said a lot of times. But that's where – Brable would come in and do those things so Mm -hmm. it feels like will levis has that now plus he really wants to wants to go out there and win he gets upset when we don't go get a play that's right even if that play don't matter he's like i'm upset that that play didn't i want this done right and that's something we've needed from a qb for so long so i got a lot of question marks for him but i'm excited to see what he's going to do in this next upcoming season and what brian callahan and nick holtz uses him as yeah it's kind of it's kind of crazy to me how this whole quarterback thing has played out over the last what um probably 10 years or whatever when they want mario to get drafted 2000 what 15 uh, 15 and 15 yeah. like the last nine years or so man, hey, just, 2024 and we're almost at 10 years damn yeah. man it don't feel like it, bro. <laughs> if you look at marcus mariota's gray hair it's been a while 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, dang, man, it, what have you been going through, man? You know, I feel bad for him because I, I still like Mariota, but I mean, he's not that good of a quarterback. But I always liked him as a person, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I hated to see him look like that. I'm like, damn, that man got a lot of gray hairs. Yeah. You know. But yeah, man, it, it, it's been wild how this quarterback thing has played out. I mean, here goes Marcus. And, um, you know, Marcus gave us a lot of hope through the years of what that. I mean, came in, you can't discredit what he done in those first two years. I mean, he was dealing with a bunch of foolishness himself with uh, Ken Wiz and Hunt, then had to put up with biscuit, but you just never did see, you know, what you needed to see in a quarterback with Marcus when it came to being the leader. I mean, sure, he would, you know, lift guys up. He wouldn't tear them down or anything, which you need. You need that. But yes. you have to be assertive at times. And I feel like people didn't see that in Tannehill, but he was doing it just like Austin said. He, he seen that Tannehill – Tannehill, to me, is the type of quarterback you're not going to catch him chewing a person out during the game. He's going to chew people out away from the camera. He's like mm -hmm. that person that's going to pull you to the side, then chew you out. Then we're going to go back out here and we're going to get this shit together. Yeah, now very got, aware. Yeah, yeah very right, aware right, of, right, of how right. things go. And I think with the, the last however many seasons from Mariota to Tannehill to Levis, it was like you needed Marcus Mariota to get you out of the mess that the Bud Adams passing away, Tommy Smith, no plan was. Marcus settled things. Ryan Tannehill elevated it, but it ran its course. Now you have, hopefully, the drafted guy when Will Levis to take you over the top because now I think the organization is ready to build around a quarterback. I remember back in that 2015 draft, I didn't think the Titans should have taken Marcus Mariota. I said it on radio. I was like, I, I don't think that this team around him is ready. They weren't, but they needed it to start it. But clearly with what they're spending in free agency, they're ready to build around Levis and they're not wasting any time doing it. And that's a different level of commitment from Amy Adams Strunk now to when she didn't really, she wasn't even a part or maybe she had just taken over yeah. as controlling owner, like right around that same time as that Moriota draft. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a completely different organization at this point. Man, yes. it's crazy that draft right there, man. Austin, do you want to know who I wanted the Titans to take? I, I I still remember my pick too. Who who did you think the Titans should have taken at two overall in 2015? It's crazy because I mean, initially, I wanted Tampa Bay to take Marcus Mariota so that we could take Jameis Winston, just for the know. simple fact that. I thought that the Titans needed a personality. I mean, we were we were in a time where there was no type of personality on the team, and then we're coming off that uh that uh playoff game, that college playoff game, Marcus Mario and Jameis Winston had, and uh, mm -hmm. I just I just kept looking at the Florida State sideline. I was looking at how you know what I'm saying. Those those other players, they was down and out. I mean, shoot, they was taking an ass whooping. But James was yeah. still on the sideline, you know, lifting dudes up. And I said, the Titans need that. Even with, you know, his crazy-ass personality, <laughs> I just felt that the Titans needed that. But if we don't get James Winston, I would have been cool with getting Amari Cooper. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I was a Leonard Williams guy that year. Oh, that's, yeah. That's yeah really I, I was, I was Marcus Mariota because I never forget, man. We were we before that. I think we to get that number two pick, we had we had to either like if we would have beat the Jets, we would have been like number three. And mm -hmm. we was the and the Jets was absolutely terrible. <laughs> and so was us. Like it was the worst. <laughs> I went to this game, it was the worst football game I probably have ever watched. And I was like, Yeah, man. We're gonna need Marcus Mariota. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was gonna have, yeah, we just had nothing exciting that we was doing. I was surprised the NFL even showed this game. Like it was so bad. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Early on years was was horrible, bro. Those two or three wins. Oh my god, it was so scary. It's the season where we was like, are we even gonna get a win? Oh man, this was scary, bro. <laughs> we had Antonio Andrews at running oh. back, bro. <laughs> that was years. Sean scary. Green, remember him? Yeah. yeah. Jet? But uh, uh, Bishop, yeah. Shanky, Bishop Sankey. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! 
the uh, Zach Mettenberger days. Oh my yeah. god, bro. Those was yeah, it was people legitimately mad because we drafted Mariota because they wanted to keep Zach Mettenberg. I was like, hold on, y'all. I mean, shoot. I mean, I, I understand y'all not liking Marcus Mariota for whatever reason, whether you know what I'm saying, it's him being a Pac-10 quarterback or Oregon quarterback. I understand all that. But we sitting up over here arguing because y'all frustrated over them drafting the dude at number two. <laughs> And you got Zach Badenberger, who was drafted in the sixth round. Come on, y'all. I mean, sure, have a little sense with it. But um, <laughs> and Zach don't... never seemed like he cared. Like media in the like in the locker room after games, they'd be asking him questions. He'd be like, just look like he didn't care. It's like I don't know. I, I, he was I, like, I'm just gonna go to Demumbrian after this. Like, yeah, you're <laughs> in the world with him. I was like, oh, we gotta get somebody better than this. We don't give a damn about this game. <laughs> man, thing, I wasn't man. supposed to start. <laughs> yeah, man. See, like the Titans culture back then, man. But when Bud Adams towards the end of Bud Adams was absolutely terrible. Like we was a toxic franchise, and I, I get why people. You know, in the media now, still think that we're that, and it's like, nah, we ain't nowhere near that. We want the Super Bowl yeah. now, like you know what I'm saying. We all want no yeah. fan base, want the Super Bowl. We know we can get there, like, nah, yeah, it was pretty wild, man. Uh, but yeah, man, we're gonna keep this thing rocking and rolling, man. Uh, no, we talked about this a little bit earlier, man, but uh, we're gonna we gonna get more in depth with it, man. Uh, trailing birds, uh, hot topic for obvious reasons. First round draft pick, you know, everything that went on with the AJ Brown foolishness and whatnot. Uh, most people thought that Traylon Burks would be going back to his natural position, but that may not be the case. And uh, we're going to play this video from uh, the Titans OC, uh, Coach Holtz, on uh, what he had to say about Traylon Burks. As you begin to get to know Traylon Burks and continue to dig into his, his tape, what potential does he have? Like, what can you guys do do with him to really unlock it? You know, Traylon's potential is, you know, very high. First round pick, obviously, you can see all the talent, but he's going to get what he earns. You know what I mean? And uh, he's, you know, my two days with him, he's been a great guy. He seems like he's learning a lot. He's really taking in process and all the information. And then when he gets on the field, it's what he can translate. But he's got a skill set that, you know, he's a big guy who can run and he can make contested catches. And so if he can find a way to do that for us, that'd be a pretty big uh, addition. Okay. So, I mean, once uh, most of our fellow fans heard that, the first thing they got to think about is, oh, Traylon Burks, he's gone. And I'm like, I feel y'all, but like Austin said, this man don't have any trade value. He can't stay on the field. And when he's on the field, he isn't doing too much of anything. I mean, you got the whole thing with, you know, Vrabel and the offense and, you know, him running a whole bunch of clear out routes or whatever. But still, though, your first round draft pick, man. I mean, you got to do something to show that, you know, you are worthy of this draft pick. And so far, Traylon Burks hasn't shown that. And now he's found himself in a situation to where, He's going to have to earn it. That's how I took it. Uh, your thoughts on what Holtz had to say, Austin? Yeah, I think for Traylon Burks, it's yeah. what Nick Holtz said is correct. He has the ability to run fast and to go up and catch the football over other people, but we just haven't seen it that often. Uh, he keeps get, having things happen where he loses his confidence and his momentum gets halted, whether it's the turf toe injury, his rookie year in Indy, uh, getting hit in the face in Philly and getting concussed that time after having a, a couple of nice games back to back. And then he was really having a strong camp this past year before the knee sprain against the Vikings. And I, I remember where I was sitting when I saw the tweet come through of Traylon Burks carted off knee injury at that joint uh, practice. And I was like, oh man, it obviously wasn't as bad as it could have been, but it just changed his entire mental confidence like he just couldn't get it together after that drop passes then he got concussed again going into this year he's a first round pick going into year three teams have to decide on the fifth year option after your third year this is it if Traylon Burks truly wants to take a step forward he's got to show some urgency and I said this on our show this week I want to see Traylon Burks become a gym rat this offseason. Maybe he's already started that. I don't know. I know he was working out with D Hop, 
uh, so far in the off season, and we'll see him on the field in May. Uh, but I want to see him be a gym rat because that way you stay healthy, you stay in shape, you gain confidence, and you go out there and commit yourself to another level and then try to ball out like we saw him do in Arkansas. If you Go look at his college stats. Freshman year, nothing. Sophomore year, eh, a little bit. Junior year, bam. That's when he took off. And uh, if, if he can have something like that, that would be great. I'm not counting on it. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, you never know. I, I think with his with his limited opportunities behind D-Hop and Ridley now, I think it's how can the Titans u- utilize him in situations to make him shine uh, amidst, you know, everything else they got going on offensively. I'm glad you mentioned Jim Rat, man, because our guy, uh, Max Brady, shout out to Max Brady, man. I mean, he, he, he the bro, man. He one dope ass individual, man. But, uh, he made a post that got, <laughs> got the fan base stirred up, man. Uh, Titans Global Podcast. Y'all make sure y'all go give him a listen, man. Give him a watch, turn him up, man. But he said, uh, Burke showed up to voluntary workouts, uh, workouts out of shape which doesn't bode well for him showing his new coaches that he needs to be on the tights and Austin I don't know uh if you saw that uh yesterday or whenever he posted it man but I don't get your thoughts on what man I I did I I don't know if I saw his I saw somebody's and I saw it floating around there I don't I don't think we can know one way or the other from Traylon Burks walking in from the garage and saying, what's up, brother? Like, I don't think that <laughs> tells me if he's in shape or out of shape. The wind's blowing. He's wearing a T-shirt. I don't know. He's got a, he's got a, a, a wider, larger face. Like, that is like, a lot of times people lose weight. You see it immediately in your face. I, I don't think Traylon Burks is somebody like that. I think he's just got a fuller cheeks, fuller face, and you can't tell what he's wearing. I, when I see him on the practice field in May – then we'll be able to know what do his legs look like. Does he look lean? Can he run? Is he jumping? Is he taking breaks after uh, reps and drills or not? Or is he looking good? Because if he was looking like he was last off season, that's where he needs to be. Just has to continue into the actual season. For sure, so RJ. Oh yeah, I was gonna say this, man. Uh, I lost off eight to him, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It, it's just he's it, he's too many problems, man. And, I just I, I he gonna have to show me this year, man. I'm I'm on the I'm out on trailing birds, man. I know a couple tight fans, man. We be going back and forth about them. I'm like, dude, like, yeah, I, I need y'all in my back, man. For when I don't show up to work and I, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying I miss days, man. I need y'all to have my back the way y'all have birds. Like, <laughs> I half ass do my job, man. You know, yeah. I just from here here, man. I, I lost off. Man. I need I need a better receiver than him, man. You know. Give me uh give me one of these slot receivers in the draft, or Xavier Worthy, or maybe Malik Neighbors if he's there. You know. No, I'm if, if Malik Neighbors is at seven, take it. Take like, don't waste any. Just do it. Run right to the ball. Don't, <laughs> yes. don't even think about it. No, go now. <laughs> like, have it pre-written just in case. I don't know. Whatever it is. Just... <laughs> yeah, Not like seeing that and like to, on top of like Holt saying those things about Burks. When they asked Brian Callahan at that same presser about, you know, hey, you know, the you know, wide receiver in the slot position, he named everybody but Burks. And that yeah. to me is not necessarily saying, okay, Burks is out the door, but it does say something extremely loud to me is that you're not on their radar right now. They're not expecting you to be available to them. They have a lot of questions and they're planning as if you're not going to be there, whether that means injury or trade, but you're not in their forethought right now. And they're already thinking of backup plans for you. And that's not good as a player. Like you already got a foot kind of out the door. So, and, and that's kind of my thing with why I asked about the trade. Cause if we're going to trade him, it has to be this year. Cause next year there's going to be absolutely no trade value for him. And this year it's probably just be a fifth or sixth round. It'd be like a Mac Jones type of trade situation. And at least something is better than nothing if we're going to do it. So the only hope we have is that another team possibly sees trailing on a rookie deal. And it's like, we can maybe develop him and take a risk on this with a rookie contract. And then if not, we just wasted a rookie contract, not an actual top tier wide receiver contract. So I, I don't know. This is, he's going to show some things, I think early on in, in training camp and then early on in the preseason to show this coaching staff that he can be here and can be a Titan because I already think that they're already in the thought process that Kyle Phillips and NWI is above Traylon Burks on this, in this wide receiver room. Yeah, uh, our uh, we have a guy that covers the Lions for AZ Sports in Detroit, and he texted us and he was like, "Hey, uh, 
would Titans fans take a 2025 fourth round pick for Traylon Burks? I was like, uh, yeah. yeah. Was like, yeah. He, he was like, wait, wait, wait. What about a fifth round? Like, no, no, no. Like, no, it doesn't matter. Like, no, don't change the price. And he, and he was like, oh, damn. I was like, I was like, look, whatever you want to offer, Titans fans would jump on it. Uh, and so, you know, I think he wrote a post about what the Lions could do using a, a big body receiver. Uh, like Traylon Burks to fit in with what they have with St. Brown and some others. Um, I, I just like if what's the if you're Rand Carthon and another NFL GM is on the other line, what's your sales pitch? So like, hey, here you take Traylon Burks because. Well, see if it's Lions, this would be my sales pitch. This would be great. Like, y'all already got Khalif Raymond. Y'all already got Reynolds. Like y'all already got wide receivers that were here. <laughs> And y'all develop them anyway. Y'all could do the same thing with okay. Traylon Burks. Sold. You won. <laughs> that, that, that was, I was not expecting it to be that quick. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, because you've already taken terrible Titans receivers and made them good Lions receivers twice. Why not three times? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would be a great deal for me. Other than that, if it's not them, you just try to amplify their wide receiver coach, and y'all can de develop wide receivers. This is a Mike Vrabel problem. Mike Vrabel couldn't develop nobody. You know, we just we just don't have a – it's just going to be a different scheme and strategy. He's not going to fit here. He'll really fit with y'all. Y'all can develop him, give him the chance that he really deserves. You would have to sell them that their wide yeah. receiver coach can turn them around. It'd be tough. Yeah. <laughs> Easier with the lines. Than, than <laughs> they those. see the film, Firestone, man. They know he they, <laughs> they know he's not doing nothing on the field, man. But all those things <laughs> blame the guy that's not here. Blame Vrabel. Just just blame <laughs> Jalen. <laughs> <Blame Vrabel. laughs> <laughs> you know, man, they didn't even know how to use him. Man, they had to run a clear out routes and those with that's not even what he does. You know what I'm saying, man? Keep him in the drags. Yeah, Vrabel, Vrabel just had him doing cardio and game pants. That was all that was about. Yeah, That's exactly. literally what it was, man. I mean, even when the guy was running wild open, they would not throw the ball to him. I'm like, come on, y'all. I mean, these, these defenders, they're not even thinking about him. Take advantage of it. Yeah, exactly. No, nah, that I ain't gonna lie, that drop he had in Houston, man. Well, that was horrible, man. He started the game off terribly. Like I said, how do you drop that? Like, oh my goodness, that hey, trailing birds, man. He's a headache, man. I'm sorry. He I'm needs just to go. Afraid. I'm just afraid with these concussions. Like he, he, the Philly game concussion, that was a hard hit. Then, and, and then what, that's what the Steelers game, I think it was. Yeah. He hit mm -hmm. the field turf, hit his head, got a concussion. Now, that's the one that worries me. All right. Now we're going to go into year three. Your first two years in NFL, you got head concussion injuries. So those are big injuries that you can't necessarily just heal from or give time to. They yeah. either heal or they don't. And you're going to take big hits, especially as being, if you're going to go in the slot. You're going to be taking big, big hits now. So how well is your head going to hit up on, on hits and hitting that turf again that you're going to be able to withstand that? Yeah, because you can't, like, prep, prep like, you know, Christian Fulton's out there doing everything he can to have better hamstrings. Like, there's nothing you can do about protecting your brain from getting hit on the turf or illegally by another helmet. Like, you can't, yeah. you know, prepare for that. It's just it's, if it happens, it happens. It's football. And, that yeah, those things are scary. So hopefully he doesn't have a third one. Correct. Yeah, yeah, man. He got to he got to practice good uh body control to me because I mean some of that I mean you can you know do a better job of bracing yourself for hits, preparing for hits, you know. But I mean at the end of the day, man. I mean you can't deny your body, man. Your body gonna always let you know. And with Burks, man, uh, I don't care about none of the other stuff that's going on. I mean, hell, he can. He can go out and have a drink with uh Travante uh Sweat or whatever. I know I slaughtered his name, but he can go out and have a drink with him. I don't I don't give a damn right now. What are you gonna do in August and September, dog? That that's what it boils down to me for trailing Burks, man. I mm -hmm. mean, all this other stuff. Just get me to August and September. Show me you can stay on the field. And when you on the field, show me that you can actually be worth something. Start with just learning how to beat your beat the man in front of you. You do that and catch the ball. You're gonna you're gonna make a damn good career doing that in the slot because I think that's where the Titans align him up at if he actually shows his worth. But we're going to move along the defense, man, because we can't forget about the defense. No matter how much the offense does, if the defense ain't doing a damn thing, it's not going to matter. If you don't believe me, ask the Los Angeles Chargers. But uh, 
Denard Wilson. <laughs> I had to throw a I like that little dig. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But Denard, uh, Denard Wilson, that's my guy too, man. Denard Wilson, man. He um he talked about you know the division and you know how he felt about the other teams and the moves that. They are making. You mentioned this team's gotten better since you've been here. Other teams in the division have gotten better too. How much do you pay attention to that now? How much can you do anything about that now? Or how much is now focusing on your own guys and worry about that later? Well, really, you know, I don't focus on what other teams have. To me, they're nameless faces, right? We're going to play a certain style. We're going to play with confidence. So it doesn't matter who they have on the team. It's 11 versus 11. And it's in terms of the defense, it's 11 against one. It's 11 versus the ball. So you can get a whole lot of receivers, a whole lot of weapons, but it's only one ball. And it's our job to surround the football and take it away. Man, my I, got heart, new, man. I got a new idea. Right. Whenever you call that other GM to trade away Traylon Burks, have Denard Wilson do the sales pitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a damn good point. I, I like that right Because that guy's man. good. He nails it every time. Every time. Yeah. I don't want to say, man, he makes my heart melt, man. Just because of what he said, this is something I've been saying for a damn long time. Stop worrying about what other teams got going on. Forget what they are doing. If you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to handle their ass. Go ahead, Fausto. Yeah, no, I'm saying, yeah, it, it, either between Denard and Rand being on the phone, I'm sure they get it done. I mean, we we was able to take Calvin Ridley away and had the same contract offer as the Jags. So, I mean, between Rand and Denard, we'll definitely sell them on, on taking trailing. Uh, but no, man, that's exactly it. Like, I mean, I love the fact that he said that it's not 11 versus 11. It's 11 versus 11 until the play happens, whether it's a run or to whoever the ball get into in that, in that, that play. So then it's 11 versus one. He's absolutely right. So we got to get guys that – recognize what the play is and then full motor right right to that ball put the foot in the ground plant and then make make decisions and start heading to that ball because there were so many times where a lot of players on the titans team or on titans defense wasn't nowhere near the ball and that that's one of the reasons why she's shair was able to be around the ball so much get the tackles he was man he just had that intuition we don't need just one of him we need a whole defense full of them that has that mind of where the ball is and then i'm gonna go head hunt that's why i love the cheetah bay signing and the luxurious need signing because those guys love to go tackle they love to be physical mm -hmm. they're going to go out there they're going to go attack the ball so it starts to turn that page to let us know that all right defense is going to go search the ball and go get the ball and bring the ball back for us for offense to do some things yeah, and like with Sneed's kind of like a microcosm of what Wilson's talking about. Like defense, you be the dictators. Don't like Sneed lines up there and ball snap, hit the receiver in the chest before he does anything. And everybody's like, oh, that's kind of a good idea if you can pull it off. Uh, but if you get beat quick, then you're screwed. So if if you can dictate what the what the the method's gonna be and dictate the the overall theme of how that defense is gonna play and make the offense adjust, then you've already won that first battle. So um, I, look, I, I, Denard Wilson, I'm, I'm very intrigued about what this defense is going to look like. I'm excited about it. Uh, we'll see how they continue to fill out the rest of the defensive roster because still have some holes, but, uh, the secondary is way better than anything they put on the field the last few years. Yeah. The, the yeah, one thing <laughs> there you go. I can't remember the secondary like this. No, nah, but I, I'll be real. Um, I, I really believe in what Denard Wilson is building, but at the same time, I do agree with what he's saying because like. I know everybody got their eyes over in Houston and Jacksonville and what Indianapolis is doing. Me, I'm just trying to make sure that we fix this defense up so we the team that everybody's worried about. I'm trying to become the team that everybody's worried about, you know. Um, and I know what they're trying to do, and I can tell by their mindset, they're building it. And, you know, saying move forward, man, you look at any other great teams, man, they don't care about what's going on. You think the Chiefs care about what's going on in Houston? No, man, they worrying about what's happening in Kansas City, man. They trying to get, they trying to get there. They trying to three-peat, man, you know. I'm trying to be them. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're trying to be. Yeah. Now, now, there is one thing that does scare me about Denard Wilson, and I'm sure it's in the back of every Titans fan's mind just a little bit. How long is he actually going to be around? Because he's oh, talking yeah. too damn good, bro. He's going to be a head coach in no time. So how long are we actually going to have him for before he's taken off by somebody else? Because he's talking too good in these, these media days and yeah, stuff for him not to be a head coach candidate soon. Yeah, I'll say two years. Two years. Two years. <laughs> Two he years. Don't. If everything goes well, if the Titans are seeing two years. Somehow the Lions keep hanging on to their coordinators. 
for the man, you, man. you never know. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, is and I always thought it funny. Everybody's talking about oh, higher offensive minded head coach, which the Titans had to do. But five of the eight new coaches are on defense, right? And you know, a couple of those, the Patriots just elevating Gerard Mayo. Yeah, okay. And then Raheem Morris back in Atlanta. That feels like a makeup higher from what they should have done a few years ago with Raheem Morris. But still, I think it's interesting that that's where they went. And Denard Wilson, I think you're kind of hoping that the really good defensive guys got hired this cycle. And so maybe it takes a couple of years for teams to go looking for those other D coordinators. And uh, so he could be here for a little longer. No, nah, yeah, man. Uh, he seems like he's got that uh, attitude I got when it comes to defense. I feel like defense is a mentality. I mean, you you got to come out there and you got to think that you're better than the opposing offense. I mean, because if you ain't you ain't got that mentality, you're going to get beat. And mm-hmm. um, I just look back at uh, when the Patriots had their run, man, and uh, guys used to just talk about, you know, as soon as they stepped foot in Foxborough, man. Um, they could they could tell that the opposing team was intimidated by them. And they said when they would look over at them guys, they already knew that they were going to beat them. And I think the Titans, I mean, they get they're getting to that point now. We're gonna have to see it play out on the field most definitely, but they definitely got the people in the building that can show them that hey, y'all look, y'all are here for a reason. We just need y'all to go out there and prove it. Yeah, absolutely. But like that's everything, man. Uh, damn, this has been a fire ass show, man. Uh, <laughs> shout out to man, shout out to Austin Stanley and everybody over at A to Z Sports, man. Austin, talk your shit, man. Yeah, uh, you can catch us just about anywhere. But uh, Monday through Friday, eight a.m. Central Time, we go live talking Titans for usually a little over an hour. Have a great time with uh, whether it's my co-founder Zach Bingham, Sam Phelan. Our Titans reporter, Jack Gentry, the Titan Up podcast. We always have um, a, a good uh, good time talking Titans and interacting with everybody. And it's draft season. We're getting set up to have a big draft and draft reaction. And then let's go see what these guys look like on the field next month. Because before you know it, it's OTAs and we get to go see Calvin Ridley and Sneed wearing these new jerseys. And uh, hopefully Malik Neighbors wearing some tight. You can't wear eight, so we'll have to figure that out. Uh, maybe 18. 18. Uh, might look pretty good. So that, that's just me hoping that Malik Neighbors is the guy because that would be more fun. Uh, but then I appreciate you guys having me on. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure, man. We got to do this again, man. And matter of fact, next time we do this, man, we got to get your boy Zach on here, man. We got to get y'all in the backyard, gloves off, and let y'all just go at it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I was to say he don't need no more time around Zach than he got. <laughs> so man, shout out to Zach though, man. Y'all, man, y'all been doing this for a damn long time, man. I, man, honestly, man, I've been uh following y'all since the one hundred two point five days, man. Six o'clock in the morning, y'all yeah. arguing like hell. Zach got dang it. He on 10 at fucking uh, 6 30 in the morning. Man. <laughs> exactly, man. He be getting hot, man. I'll be like, what? <laughs> Our goes, man. And the crazy, he does not drink coffee. It is. <laughs> That's how he is all the time. No caffeine. Wow. Not in the morning. He'll drink like an afternoon, like cup of coffee or something. But in the mornings, he's waking up and he's like that. So, wow. so he definitely don't need any sunny smile in the morning, man. You might have no. to talk about it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, let's go ahead and talk about sunny smiles, man, because you got to start your morning off right, man. We know Zach don't drink coffee, man, but everybody ain't Zach. Everybody, some, some people need that extra little boost in the morning you're gonna get that extra little boost with sunny smiles coffee man head over to sunny smiles coffee.com free shipping in the u.s premium freshly roasted coffee straight from the house of leonard firestone <laughs> 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 
but yeah, no, this episode is brought to you by Lions Den Beard Collection.com as well. Use promo code Coliseum, get 25% off your order, get your beard in the tip top shape. Or if you're trying to start it off, they have growth beard uh, pills for you there. Uh, they also have a female oh, okay. line collection as well for you. So the ladies have got <laughs> lips and mouth and everything as well. So you whether you got your beard or you're trying to grow your beard, they got everything for you. So go to Lions Den Beard Collection.com, promo code Coliseum, 25% off. And grab your Let Ran Cook shirts. Before draft day, make sure y'all grab them that way. When we all show up to the Titans draft party, we got our Let Ran Cook shirts on, and they're going to see. So go to TitansColiseum.com, check out the article, sign up for the newsletters, email list, and grab your merch from there at the same place. Man, Austin, I seen you up over there rubbing on your face, man. You going to get you a little beer started? I don't think so. Uh, not gonna oh, not, man, not come on party. over to our side, man. It is crazy over here. Yeah, I, I don't like an man. effort. I'm, it's just not. It's just not. Like <laughs> well, how it goes in the family. <laughs> you can grow it up here. I can't grow it here, but I can grow it here. So we just got the reverse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this. Well, before we wrap this thing up, man, hey, rapper, talk your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it, man, make sure Romel's in the game on all streaming platforms, man. Make sure you go and get it, man, and check out the rest of my music as well. You know, Absolutely. nah, man, come on, rapper, man. You got you got to talk your shit, man. You the greatest <laughs> rapper in the world and all that, man. You better than a little way. You the first person to ever make a uh titans coliseum intro <laughs> intro song it won't man. be the last oh, no. one either man we're gonna, we're, we're gonna <laughs> update it it's gonna be an updated better version here coming soon man just, just let it go ahead man i'm just yeah i'm a humble person man i don't like to brag about my, my music skills like i just don't i'm very humble i just let you hear it and i, I hear what you gotta say you know that's how i am so go check out the music let the music speak for itself is what he's saying so yeah, go check the music out. gonna speak for itself <laughs> so also yeah, when, when you get a chance man when you when you're on your free time man just look at look up road mails man you're gonna see what you gonna see what you like you, you know? got it man you got it yeah That's man my good. dog i ain't gonna brag man this is a council thing around here man we <laughs> all council brothers man but hey with that being said man everybody enjoy your weekend be safe out there and tighten the fuck up let's go